he wants to deward this area if possible here because he calls his team over they actually find the ricky and this is like a star sense you know like because he plays carry for so long he really understands that the enemy wants to kill him but while he's farming ancients because they know how important ancients are for luna to farm so here the ricky gets caught out they remove his aegis right away he even pops the ulti on Archeezy, and you can see here he's staying on strength treads in the fight and that's why he's actually staying alive for this long like it took him all four heroes dying before Arteezy died and he almost made it out of there so strength treads magic wand you know he tanks so much in this clash they all focus him because they know he's the one that's going to be farming the most If you like our content please do like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the notification button below so you will be notified when a new video will be released in this video we're going to be talking about luna i think luna is a very popular carry right now it's extremely powerful it can do a lot of good things for your team it can provide aura has multiple gale builds and item builds that can make it really good depending on who you're playing against but this is going to be a very like standard farm oriented luna that can roam around the I map and get like 50 last it's a minute it's gonna be piloted by rtz he's the one we're gonna be watching starting item build he actually started with one tangles slipper circlet double branches and fair fire i see rtz do this a lot where he just starts with like one region because he can bring out more and on the first wave he wants to have more stats in the lane so he can last it better with it at level one you're gonna be skilling lunar blessing almost like 90 percent of the time if you ever skill lucid beam even if it's for a first blood normally it's not worth it because this lunar blessing gives you a lot of damage not only to you but also to your teammates you're gonna want to uh, skill lunar blessing level one almost like every single time so you can see here like in the laning stage you just try to contest as many last as they can you have more damage than the enemy normally as you can see here tz has like 70 damage on his luna and with the first courier usage he's gonna bring himself out a wraith man because he didn't lose that much hp in the lane anyway and his undying also has a healing salve if rtz gets too low in this lane and then level two scales up the losing beam sees the tusk getting low tries to help him out but overall, just going to keep on farming. If the lane gets pulled by the enemy, you would just go there and farm it up. Your number one priority as a Luna is just get as much experience as you can and as much gold as you can. Because the more gold and XP you get, the faster you can be farming. And that's the goal uh, of this hero, mainly throughout the early game. You also have a lot of kill potential, and that's one of the reasons why she's really good in lane as well. Because paired with the support, if they get a little bit out of position inside the creep wave, you can just lose and beam them. This build does a lot of damage and also mini stuns is extremely annoying to deal with. And on top of that, don't be afraid to try and lose and beam creeps for last hits if you need to. Especially range creeps because they give a lot of XP and gold and you don't want those getting denied. So here you can see RTZ pushed out the wave already and then he sees that there's a very low voice spirit just helps the support get the kill on him and using losing beam to like slow down the enemy and uh, help your support do more damage to him is also very nice just make sure you don't spam it too much you want to have at least like 30 to 40 percent of your mana left just so you have it ready to be cast when it is an opportunity for you to kill him as you can see here the tusk gets a little bit out of position RTZ initiates with Lucid Beam and they start going on this Tusk and with the Undying they were just able to clean up that kill. And you can kind of box out the enemy heroes too with the Luna. In the lane, like let's say you're fighting 2 versus 1 and you're up here with the Luna, you can always move more forward and provide aura for your support who's going to box out the enemy off later. And it's a very popular build right now to go for 2 levels in Lunar Blessing and 2 levels in Lucid Beam by level 4. I think it's okay, mainly because if you get Moonglaives on level 4, you're going to be pushing out the lane a little bit too much. Maybe at that time you want to freeze it. There are builds where you can go 3 levels in Lucent Beam, 1 level in Moonglaze, and 1 level in Lunar Blessing. I think that's probably the best build to be honest. I think 1 level in Lunar Blessing is enough. You don't really need the second point in uh, Lunar Blessing, personally. But it's very important, as you can see here, he actually skills up Glaives on level 5. And that's because soon he's going to start jungling. And he's going to want to have max Moonglaze. Because this is the reason why Luna is such a powerful uh, and fast farmer is because of this skill. If you look at this skill and how it scales, it goes from bounces 1, 2, 3, and then 6 on level 4. It pretty much doubles up. So the faster you can get to Moonglaves after pretty much securing your lane, the better it is for you. So he feels like after having 2 points in Lucent Beam, his lane is already secured. He can pretty much free farm in his lane as he wishes. And now he can start scaling his Moonglaze already. And we can probably see he's not even going to scale his Eclipse here. He's going to scale up another point in Glaze. And uh, his second item was another Wraith Band. This is very normal for cores right now. You just get two Wraith Bands. So you get that early damage, fast farming in the jungle and such. And actually he goes for a third level of Lucent Beam instead. So 
maybe the moon glaze was not so necessary for him to get on level five so he's just uh, decided that okay actually i want another point of lucid beam i'll probably be staying in the lanes a little bit longer since the enemy is not pressuring me yet so next item after that's gonna be a morbid mask now i wouldn't recommend always going morbid mask i think it's good build up for you to have some sustain in the jungle because at this point by six minutes if you already have like at least one or two points of moon glaze you can definitely just go start jungling like you just farm so fast in the jungle so you can like push out the lane go to the big camp jungle go to like the small camp jungle there too and then just keep like have a nice solid farming pattern like this and obviously on radio i'm gonna farm like this right and as you can see here at tz getting jumped top lane at seven minutes this is probably a very bad time for him to be in the lane because all the enemy is missing off the map and there's no he has no wards top so this death by him is like very uncharacteristic but he was very greedy for the lane creep so he could have just been jungling right now that's a very good example of why like if everybody's off the map as a luna you just want to go into the jungle and here he realizes top lane is compromised he tps to the mid tier too starts farming sees a fight break on mid he was thinking about going there to maybe cast some lucid beams and maybe they can get like some low hp kills on them but it wasn't really you know a good situation for him to go to so he goes back here starts jungling up and here's where you're gonna see luna's like starting to max out the moon glaze the moment they start jungling you already want to start skilling up your moon glaze you don't really care about your other skills because the reason why you went into the jungle to begin with is because you can't lane anywhere anymore and uh, you're gonna want to farm as fast as he can in there so here the enemy comes into a jungle tries to contest the jungle and he just helps his allies right every time he casts lucent beam it's a little bit of help to his allies it's like 225 damage mini stun and on top of that he's also giving lunar blessing to his teammates making them a little bit tankier giving them a little bit more damage and if you help your allies kick out the enemy from the jungle then you can just go back and free farm uh, right after that so he's just gonna go back here and start farming and his next item he's going for is actually going to be mask of madness i personally like this build there are some builds where you can go like dominator or you can just go power treads into like a yasha manta build you can even go for like a dragon lance route but personally in public games i feel like mask of madness route is really really good i'm a huge fan of the Dyer's mask of madness build tower. Here he sees that top lane was already pushed out, he TP's bottom, nobody is there for the enemy. So he pushes that lane out, farms the jungle camp here. In some games, if your team is really dominating bottom, you can just TP bottom and give aura to your allies to help take the bottom tower. You do a lot of damage by 10 minutes. You can see he's doing like more than 100 damage a hit already. So it's very, very nice. Now that he's got mask, he's just going to turn that on every camp he goes to. Just farm it as fast as he can. And with the moon glaives, it's just so nice. He also scaled one level in Eclipse here on level 8 because he feels like the enemy is playing very aggressively and he might actually use the Eclipse even though his Lucent Beam is not maxed out and Eclipse works off the level of your Lucent Beam it's he's fine he's content with it being level 3 because his main focus is obviously to farm faster right the faster you farm the more levels you get the more skill points you can add to max out all of your skill and that's what Luna needs she needs a lot of XP so she maxes out all of her skills and she can become this uh, really strong team fighting beast but here catapult comes at 10 minutes he just pushes out the lane make sure the catapult is in the tower and then as soon as the glyph comes out he goes into the jungle here because he notices that some heroes are missing and there's a very good chance when the enemy glyphs the tower that's the time that they're gonna come and try to contest and stop you from pushing the tower and here he notices no one's coming to defend bottom goes back into a tower defends the catapult a little bit tank for the catapult the catapult doesn't die and this is what does the most amount of damage to towers and because he was able to tank for the catapult and the enemy didn't defend bottom, he just takes the tower here. And his next item now is power chest. Now all the items he's bought right now is pretty much a build up to be able to farm faster in the game. These are all amazing items. And the magic wand is the only item that's like not an item that helps him farm faster, but it's a very good team fighting item. It can give you some extra HP when the enemies try to smoke and kill you in the jungle or something. And you're going to keep that item for a while, so... Now he TP's middle, he noticed there was a creeper in front of his tower, everybody was missing off the map and there was no words for him bottom so he couldn't stay down here. So he actually switches the jungle to the right side now. Ideally on a Luna, as soon as you get Mask of Manus and this strong, you want to be able to farm like this over and over again because this is where the two Ancients camps are. Ancient camps is like where Luna gets majority of her farm. So here she just goes to this Ancient camp, starts farming it up. Radiance under attack. Radiance use the mask of manis obviously they can use go to in treads use the mask of manis switch to agi treads so you save yourself a little bit of mana every time and when you're farming you want to stay on agi treads when you're tanking damage you want to stay on strength treads so you're a bit tankier harder for the enemy to kill you so here his team wants to smoke up so he actually joins the smoke he does have level 4 lucent beam and eclipse 
So it's actually a very strong team fight until even the early game. And if they just get some random kills on the map, it's like very nice. Because it also opens up an opportunity for you to farm without feeling threatened on the map. That they have five heroes and maybe they can kill you. So here he just pushes out the lane. He'll always prioritize trying to push out lanes if there's nobody in his lane or coming for him. So here he pushes out the lane really quickly. And the reason why he TPs out like this so fast is because he doesn't actually see anyone on the map. And he didn't want to move straight into the jungle like this. If you look at the minimap like this, because he knows that there's a chance that they could have smoked and tried to catch him. Because that's where they predict his next farming pattern is. So he does like the more unpredictable play, which is immediately TP as soon as he farms the top lane out. And he TPs to the mid lane, where he has protection from his team a little bit. And then he's like, guys, I need to contest this ancient, so can you guys cover me here? He wants the enemy to like, you know, deward this area if possible. Here, because he calls his team over, they actually find the Ricky. And this is like a star sense, you know, like... Because he plays carry for so long, he really understands that the enemy wants to kill him while he's farming Ancients. Because they know how important Ancients are for Luna to farm. So here the Ricky gets caught out. They remove his Aegis right away. He even pops the ulti on Arteezy. And you can see here, he's staying on strength, strength treads in the fight. And that's why he's actually staying alive for this long. Like, it took him all four heroes dying before Arteezy died. And he almost made it out of there. So strength treads, magic wand... You know, he tanks so much in this clash. They all focus him because they know he's the one that's going to be farming the most. And they need to kill him. So they lost all their heroes trying to kill ITZ here. And this was all him calling his allies over, asking for like one sentry in this area. And dewarding the Ancients area so he can farm more freely. And it just started this, you know, chain reaction. So instantly, as soon as they're alive, he TP's bottom on the outpost. He knows that his team is out on the map. The enemy just died, so they can't be out on the map so quickly. And the reason why I TP to bottom up post is because he wants to push his lane out and be ready to be able to farm either this ancient camp or this ancient camp, right? To maximize his farm. His next item after Mask of Madness was Yasha, so he has a lot of movement speed, right? You Because Luna can farm so fast. He goes to a creep camp and the glaives just shred the creeps, right? Look at this ancients right now. Like, look how fast they die. And then because of that, you just want to have more and more movement speed on your Luna. And Yasha is perfect at him because it gives you movement speed, it gives you damage. No, it gives you agility, it gives you all the good stuff that Luna needs. So Mask of Madness into Yasha, and then next item is going to be Complete Manta. And the Manta allows you to remove, you know, negative buffs off you, slows. It can, uh, you know, juke your enemy, you can juke the enemy with it by clicking on it. Or you can just use your Manta to farm faster. So you can use your Manta, send it to a lane, so you can push that lane out while you're jungling. So you don't have to put yourself in danger by using your hero to farm lanes, where you can use your manta to farm. So here he, he pushed top, his allies came from behind, and together they just kill off this void spirit. And I really want to mention like how good Lunar Blessing is with your allies when you're all grouped up pushing towers together, because it gives so much armor and like damage to your team, which is very nice. Now he's got manta complete, and they just want to keep on going top for a little bit more. As you can see, RTC sees bottom, there's heroes there, there's a clinks here. He does want to defend bottom tower though, because he noticed the clinks was mid lane. But TV's bottom, there's he's a lot of creeps down here too, he would like those as well. But he actually gets gone on, it, it's like a little bit of a bait here, because the Ricky was here, and his ally died. And now RTC is most likely going to die here too, they really really want to get him, but he's so tanky because of the strength trends and his manta but he, at the end of the day he still dies and to be honest i really didn't like this play by him i would rather that the beastmaster and the luna kept going so they would have got the tier 2 tower top or forced the enemy to like tp top to defend because him tp bottom and trying to fight is like to be honest i feel like normally he wouldn't do that play but he maybe was trying to experiment a little bit to see how it worked but you don't really want to defend towers with your luna you want to be the one putting the aggression on the enemy and making them defend the towers so you can always have, you know, control of the vision around you and everything. He's gonna be dead for a little while. So he's actually died three times, but you can see his net worth is very high still. For someone who died three times, you know, this amount of net worth is like really good. So you can see here the usage of Manta, he pops the Manta. He wants to push out the 20 minute wave middle. And these Manta illusions will clear an entire creep wave. And as you can see, it actually cleared the entire creep wave on their own. And then he's just using his hero to like farm jungle camps and going just going camp to camp. And just keep on maximizing your farm. Because Luna will out-farm whatever hero that she's against. Unless it's probably Alchemist. If you got a really good farming pattern. We just keep going camp to camp and you just farm lanes when the enemy is not going to be contesting. 
Goes back top again, pushes lane out. And one of the reasons why he's top right now is because uh, next Roshan is going to be spawning pretty soon. And he doesn't want to like give away this area of the jungle to the enemy. Because if they get control of Roshan, the game gets really hard at 20 minutes. But ideally, like because the enemy is pressuring him so much, he also had to go top. But in a really good game, you would like to farm in this area, like this. So he pushes out bottom, he farms the jungle, he farms the ancients. And you, you just like keep going back down here, farming the other ancient camp as well. And you would maximize your farm like crazy. So if you're like in a lower MMR bracket, like that would be really, really easy to do. Because the enemy is probably not thinking too much about ancients or trying to contest your farm that much. Because he doesn't have the access to this jungle, the way he's farming instead is like this farming pattern. While his team kind of just creates a shield for him in front. So they're just leaving all the jungle camps to him. Just like that and all of a sudden he just took over the ricky and network as well in the last three minutes he's found 2500 gold that's very high gpm and you can see his last hits, he's farming at 10 last hits a minute at the moment but that's because in an early game you're not farming as many creeps but in the late game he's farming like 15 last hits a minute to catch up to that and as you can see here, he pushed top out he he made sure that there's enough pressure then tp his middle and farms this triangle area here as soon as they're respawned once again because this triangle area can give you so much farm, so many lassets. And he's always there, available with his team to take any clashes. You see here, he's been part of 14 kills, even though there's 19 kills on his allies. So not only is he farming extremely fast, but he's also ready to be able to fight with his allies. So here he notices that there's a Void Spear top, so he made his way into the jungle. Finally, he's able to farm the Radiant Ancient Camp. And then also using his manta to push the bottom lane out. And that's going to keep him safe. And the enemy only sees the illusions bottom. They don't see the real Arteezy, right? So they don't bring themselves down there to try and, you know, kill Arteezy in any way. So here our Roshan fight breaks out. He has Eclipse and he has Lucent Beam. So he's ready to take the fight here. He actually kills off the Clinks, bouncing off the Roshan. Luna's actually really good at contesting Roshan because when you hit the heroes here, they actually bounce off the Roshan, the Moonglaze. And that's going to do a lot of damage to them. And in this game, he actually decided to go for a Hurricane Pike after Manta. It's a pretty decent item overall, but it's even especially good this game because of the Ricky, right? The Ricky wants to smoke Cloudy and use the Fiesel. So he's just using the Pike to like make the distance between him or just use it on his allies to save them. And Pike does give you good stats. 20 agility is great, 15 strength, 13 int, all good stats for Luna as well. Allows her to stay alive and do damage. Some items you can go for instead of a Hurricane Pike would be a Black King Bar. I know it sounds like a lot of defensive items, but Luna doesn't really need a lot of damage items early on. She just needs ways to like stay alive so she can provide enough auras for her team and keep on farming faster. So she can get to those damage items as well. So this game, instead of BKB, he actually opts for a Hurricane Pike. If you look at the Radiant lineup, like BKB doesn't really make that much sense compared to Hurricane Pike. So it's either BKB or a Pike in this kind of situation. And his next item is going to be a Butterfly. Now, one thing to note as well is Mask of Madness, why it's really good on Luna is because you can break it. You can disassemble it to make yourself a butterfly and then you can use the mask to make yourself satanic. So it's a very efficient, cost efficient item that you can utilize for late game build also. You can see here again. Now his allies are nearby. He's just using the Aegis to be able to take the tier 2 towers. Normally you're not really taking tier 2 towers on Luna without the Aegis. That's just like how high level dota works so you just kind of get your ages before you start forcing tier 2 towers before that you just keep on farming but this game he's got the ages goes for tier 2 and he's got a beastmaster who also provides auras for him for tz here on this luna and luna is just gonna go to this tower and look at that it's just so much damage like it just does so much it's so hard for the enemy to try and contest you as a like when you're a luna because when you get to the high ground and they're not ready to defend, that... Is under attack. Hey, look at that. That glaze damage. It just shreds. Like, that, all that was was, like, one Lucent Beam, a Sniper Assassinate stun, and then that plus just melted, right? And another secret about Luna that's really good and maybe not as common, like, when you think about Luna, is, like, when you once you take the Tier 3 towers down, the Raxes melt super fast because they your glaze keep bouncing between both of the Raxes and they also bounce between the heroes who are trying to defend. So it becomes very difficult for the enemy to defend the Raxes. Here Ricky just gets blasted and as you can see here, like the moment that tier 3 goes down, he pops his Mask of Madness and this Enchantress can't even stand there to cast any skills. 
Thankfully, the backdoor protection goes off, but it doesn't even matter. That Rax is just dead, right? That Glaze just melted a Rax. Luna, probably one of the best seizures in the game. You know, I would put her in the same class as Lycan when it comes to being able to destroy Raxes. Uh, now her next item, obviously, butterf Butterfly, and as you can see here, she just bought the Talisman. And the reason why RTC just bought the Talisman is because he's going to disassemble his Mask of Madness into making the Butterfly. You can see here, disassemble, unlock the Quarter Staff, make the Butterfly, and now the next item, easily going to be a satanic because that's the build up for the morbid mask right so they got this early game mask of madness that just splits into two really amazing items later on after these like super key team fights that you just win because you just have either more items than the enemy or you just have more auras than the enemy you just tank here do more damage you know these items just come so naturally and you can see the net worth just completely overtook this ricky in this game and he just so focus on the objectives, right? Like Luna's not this kind of hero who just wants to keep on chasing heroes around the map. She just wants to farm and focus on objectives. And then if the enemy come to you or you see a fight where you can like help your allies, then you just take it. But she's not like a hunter who's just like running around killing people non-stop throughout the game. And here she just focus on the tower. If the enemies come to defend the tower, then they will take so much damage from the moon glaze. But at the same time, she's also killing off the tower. So you see here, once the Void Spirit went too deep into him, that's the time that he turned around and started hitting the Void Spirit here. The Clinks just has to go away. And back at it, back to the objectives, you know, that's what matters here. Starts hitting the Raxes. And the Glaze, look at this end, she's just dying just to the Glaze alone. It's so annoying for this for these heroes to try and defend the Raxes after the tier 3 has already fallen. Titanic almost complete now, already has a claymore. And this is such a perfect build up, right? Like every every item in this build is so efficient. And like I said, it's either you go Hurricane Pike or you go Blacking Bar. You can just assess that off the enemy heroes, what they have. But apart from that, afterwards you always go for like Butterfly, Satanic build, um, especially when you go with the Mask of Manager. Another route you can go if you don't want to go Mask of Manager and something more team oriented is you can go for Helm of the Dominator, which I think is also very good. So here, pushes the top lane, last Rax left, and it's just so easy, right? And now he's got a Satanic, he even put the, left the Courier up here to finish up the Satanic. And this is it! Complete build! You can sell your Magic Wand for another item, and this other item could be like Scotty, Rapier, whatever you need for your game, right? You, um, at this point you can probably assess like, what's the most important item that you need against the enemy lineup, and you can just go for that. So talents also for Luna in this game, we didn't mention that while we were watching. He actually didn't scale the talent on level 10. Normally you don't want to scale your talent on level 10 because you want to make sure that your Moonglaves are maxed out first before you scale a talent. And then he goes for the 350 cast range talent. This one is really good because it allows you to spam your Lucent Beam from a safe distance or cancel TPs or just help your allies straight up. I think it's really good. I, I feel like 90% of Lunas go for this talent. I think it's great. Then. 15 talent, he went for minus 3.5 second Lucent Beam cooldown. So this allows you to spam more in the clashes, your Lucent Beam. But late game, you already have plenty of mana, so you don't have to think about running out of mana with this hero, to be honest. And then you just get a lot of mini stuns out with it. Then level 20, went for the plus 8 all stats. This gives you a lot of HP damage. It's very good. And then for your level 25 talent on Luna, you can go for the Eclipse loosen mini stun because normally at that point you might even have an agonims where you eat it off your roshan or you bought it and then you can just throw that on someone and just you know supports or something and they just die super fast if you feel like it's a game where you're not buying agonims then you can definitely go for the 30 percent lifesteal so you can just man fight enemy carries better but normally i see the 0.2 seconds eclipse loosen mini stun because you just build up a agonims late game anyway the 30% life seam is kind of redundant when you go the satanic route. Uh, when do you go for Ags on Luna? When you feel like you can't really break the enemy high ground. When you can't break the enemy high ground and there's like heroes who are hiding in the back, like for example, a Sniper, that's a very good example of a hero who just stays very far back or awkward and, and you need one of your allies to just jump in, then you can go for Ags. And when, the, when your ally jumps in, you can drop the Eclipse on your ally. So it just does crazy amount of damage to your backline your heroes.
Or if you have like a storm spirit in your lineup, you can just use it. Oh.